Hi everyone, I'm Karina and I work in our Singapore office with our Asia Pacific region. I've been with AGI for four years, just recently had my four year anniversary. And today I'm gonna walk through our aircraft engineering scenario that we have online. So before I actually dive into the scenario, I wanna show you where you can find the scenario on our website. If you go to agi.com, up in the top right, you can click on support, supporting SDK data, example SDK scenarios, and this will bring you to our free scenarios as well as our solution area scenarios. So if you scroll down, the one that I'm gonna walk through right now is our aircraft systems scenario. So you can download this straight off our website as long as you have a valid web account with us. And the scenario itself comes with the full SDK scenario with all of the objects I'm gonna walk through, as well as this HTML viewer. So this kind of shows you an introduction to the scenario and how to walk through all the different stored views, all the different objects and all of the analysis that's in here. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good introduction to SDK within the aircraft engineering domain. This is the 3D graphics window. So this is our scenario overview. In this scenario, we have a UAV that's flying over this specified region. And it is taking imagery and video over this mountainous terrain. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can actually see that I have a custom block of terrain in my scenario. So SDK can take into, um, into the scenario many different custom terrain formats. They just have to be converted into something that SDK is compatible with. So we accept DTED, DEM, all of these different formats, and you just have to convert it and you're able to bring it into SDK for visualization and for analysis purposes. So I'm gonna zoom on into my UAV. And here you'll see I have a 3D model of my UAV in question here. So SDK can also bring in custom 3D models. So if you have a, a custom CAD model or something like that, again, it just has to be converted to a format that's compatible with SDK and you can bring it on in and use it for a more realistic visualization of your scenario. This UAV's route was defined using Aviator, which is one of our advanced aircraft propagators. This allows us to take into account the full flight profile of the UAV. So this is a shadow UAV. And if I go ahead and open up the properties of it, I can show you all of the different performance models that were used to define this UAV. So things like the acceleration, climb, cruise, descent, landing, and takeoff. And all of these are custom for the specific UAV. So it's not gonna create a route or fly in a way that isn't realistic based off of the flight characteristics that are user defined. And the route is just defined with all these different waypoints. So pretty simple aviator route for this scenario, but we have all the different waypoints where it's just flying between each of those in our mountainous terrain. I also can show some of the analysis that's going on behind the scenes of our UAV. So of course SDK has really strong visualization, but we also are able to bring in a lot of the analysis that's happening in the background. So in this case, I've turned on some geometrical components that show me things like the altitude of our aircraft, the camera's field of view. So if I kind of zoom out a little bit here, we'll see I have this camera that's attached to the body of my aircraft and its field of view that's being projected onto the surface of the earth. I also have the sensor, the camera's body axis, so X, Y, Z, as well as the vector towards the sun and the angle from the sun to our camera's bore site. So on top of our UAV flying over this region and taking imagery, we also 
want to know how well the imagery is going to be able to be relayed back to our ground control station. So we have a ground control station that's over here kind of out of the mountains and we have a vector that's showing us the distance to our ground control station. On top of all of that, I can also show the latitude, longitude, and the altitude of our UAV as it flies. So this is all dynamic data. If I go ahead and animate my scenario, you can see that my latitude, longitude, and altitude is updating accordingly, as well as the distance and all of these analytical components on my UAV. So just to clear up the 3D graphics window, I'm gonna go ahead and check those off for right now. But we still have our UAV that's flying along our route here. So jumping to our search area, this is just a specified area that our aircraft is flying over, an arbitrary route, and we're using the camera on our UAV to determine how much of the area can be covered as well as the quality of that coverage. So the camera is attached to our UAV's body, meaning that as the aircraft turns and banks, the camera is going to stay fixed to the body of the aircraft. So we'll see that as it kind of flies overhead. But I quickly just wanted to show how I've defined the camera's properties. So the camera is being defined or simulated by just a sensor object. It's a rectangular sensor that is a 20 by 15 degree rectangular sensor. And again, I just have it pointing. It's just fixed to the body of the UAV. I've defined a coverage grid around this area of interest. And we're going to see how well our UAV is able to image the area and how strong the communication link is between our ground control station and our UAV as our aircraft's flying over these mountains. So you may notice there's actually a part of this route that is red. And the reason for that is it is showing that we're losing a visual line of sight between our UAV and our ground control station at that point in the route. So for communication purposes, that's really important for us to know. We want to know when we're going to lose that line of sight because our communications may drop out, may be uh, too low for us to properly relay our data back. So if I jump to kind of looking at my UAV head on and animate through, you can actually see that right at that time, our UAV is flying behind the mountains. So that's where we're losing that line of sight to our ground control station. So we're able to colorize the route as red during that time. And we can also show it another way in the timeline view. So if I look down at the bottom of my scenario, this is showing a gap in my access. So access is one of the most important things that we always talk about in SDK is looking at a line of sight between two objects. So this is showing my access intervals between my UAV and my ground control station and this is just letting me know that at this time, I have a gap in that access or in that line of sight. I can also look at that by using our coverage module. So instead of just analyzing where my line of sight drops to my ground control station along my UAV's route, I can use coverage to analyze the entire area. So coverage allows us to define a grid over a two-dimensional space and really analyze each of those grid points for that line of sight um, constraints. So here what I've done is I've just looked at an altitude slice at 10,000 feet. So if I kind of pan down, you can see this is just looking at a 10,000 foot slice of altitude. And my aircraft is actually flying at different altitudes here. So it starts at 10,000, but it actually ends up rising to about 12,000 feet. But here I can see that that red part of the route might be a little hard to see since it's being covered by the red part of the coverage. But right here is where I'm showing my UAV is losing line of sight to that ground control station. So using the coverage, it gives me an idea of where my aircraft can fly without 
losing line of sight. So everywhere in that green means I'm good to fly. At this altitude, the red is being blocked by the mountains. So again, we're, we're uh, interested in that because of the communication or the link budget, the received power between our UAV and our ground control station. So I can actually analyze the same coverage grid for a different figure of merit. And this is now looking at the received isotropic power. So assuming that I have a receiver on my UAV, I have a transmitter from my ground control station, and I'm analyzing each of these grid points to see what kind of received isotropic power I would have if my UAV was placed at each of those grid points. So you can kind of see a similar pattern from our line of sight coverage where we have that similar blockage of the mountains and that's what's causing our received isotropic power to drop down a little bit over on the right here. And we have a stronger signal on the left where we have that direct line of sight. So again, this just gives us an idea of not only where my UAV is line of sight to the ground control station, but what kind of received isotropic power or communications I'm gonna be able to obtain at each of these grid points here. And again, this is just looking at that 10,000 foot slice. So we can see that my aircraft route actually doesn't fly just at 10,000 feet over its whole route. It does rise up to about 12,000 over on the right here, and that is due to the mountains. So if we stayed at the 10,000 feet, we'd actually end up crashing into the mountains, which of course is not what we want to do. So we're raising our altitude to 12,000 feet near the end here. And if I turn on that same kind of calculation, but at 12,000 feet, now we can see, of course, we're gonna have a much better received isotropic power at that altitude. So we have less mountains blocking us and mostly blue. So it seems like it'd be better to fly at that 12,000 feet, right? We're gonna have better communication, but the trade-off is our mission objective is to take imagery and video of our area. So the higher we fly, the lower resolution image we're gonna get. So this is all different factors to consider when you're looking at mission planning, especially for a UAV route like this. We wanna have a good trade-off between our image resolution and our communication link budget. So looking at the communication, we have an idea now of the different altitudes that we wanna fly at, what kind of received isotropic power we're gonna get. Let's go ahead and look at the actual image quality for our camera. So again, we have our camera that is tied to the aircraft's body. So I'm just gonna animate here and kind of show the aircraft flying over the region. We can see that the terrain is taken into account visually and analytically, as well as the banking and how the aircraft rolls and turns. That fixed camera is just showing us a simple coverage. So it's just saying a binary yes or no, can I cover that area? So this just kind of gives us idea, an idea based off the route that our UAV is flying, how much of my region can I actually cover? So this might be another way that you can optimize your route by saying I want X percent coverage, 95% coverage, something like that. I might need to edit some of the waypoints or change the way that my aircraft's oriented in order to cover all of those regions. To get even more information, of course, this is just showing us yes or no, I'm able to cover it or not. I can look at another metric called our age of data. So this one actually shows, I'll kind of start us over here, but this one kind of shows how old the data that's collected is. So this is showing me colorizing it based off this legend. Anything that's red means it's hot data. So it's been covered or it's been seen by our camera over the last 60 seconds. Whereas anything that's blue means that it hasn't been seen in over 600 seconds. So this gives us a little more information telling us, I have covered that area, but how old is that data? So of course this is, this is important to know how long it's been since I've covered a certain area. You know, maybe I wanna add another aircraft in order to 
keep everything you know lower than 300 seconds or I want to change the route of my aircraft so that I can concentrate on a certain area. This just kind of gives us some more information, further information beyond that simple coverage. So these are dynamic coverage, where as you can see, my aircraft's flying and it's updating accordingly as the animation is playing. But the other thing we're interested in is the quality of the imagery. So, so far we've really just looked at what area or what percentage of the area can be covered and how old the data is. I wanna look at how good the quality of my data is or how high my resolution is for my image. And the way that we do that is from a metric called the ground sample distance. So this is a static metric that I'll go ahead and turn on. And this shows me a heat map over the area that specifies the ground sample distance. And what that is, is the distance between pixel centers in an image. So if we have a lower ground sample distance, that means that our image is a higher resolution. So you can see that kind of makes sense here where the lower ground sample distance is the blue areas. So based off of the terrain and how the camera is oriented when it images that area, we kind of have those blues more in the, the, the peaks or the tops of the mountains. And that higher ground sample distance or where we'd have a lower image quality looks like it's more at the, the valleys or the canyons in the mountainous terrain. So of course the distance from our camera to the surface is going to affect that. But the way that the ground sample distance is computed is based off of the resolution parameters of our camera. So we have the focal length and the detector pitch, and both of these contribute to how the ground sample distance is being computed. One really important resource I wanna point out is actually our help button. So in every properties page in SDK, we have a help button down at the bottom. And this is one of the most powerful tools in SDK, I think, in my opinion. I clicked this button so much when I was learning how to use SDK. Any properties window, if you click on that help button, it actually pops you to our help documentation for that particular properties window. So we have a lot of information in our help. It's updated regularly. It is absolutely fantastic. But since there is a lot of information, it can be kind of difficult to search through sometimes. So clicking that help button brings you right to my sensor resolution page. And look at that. It gives me the exact equation that's being used to calculate my ground sample distance. So it's using that detector pitch, that focal length. Of course, it's based off the range, the elevation. And I even get a nice little image here. So really powerful button. It's uh, available with every, with every um, properties window in SDK. All right, so that's how our ground sample distance is being computed here. And this is just one of many different figures of merits that we can look at within the coverage module. So I looked at the line of sight and that received isotropic power for our sensor coverage, we looked at the age of data, the simple coverage, and then that static ground sample distance. But if we open up the properties, I just wanna show some of the additional available figures of merit that we can look at. So everything that SDK is able to compute in that coverage, we can use a figure of merit to analyze each of those grid points based off of all these different measures of mission effectiveness. So for the purpose of this demo, we were looking at the image quality, the resolution that we're able to obtain from our UAV. And we're able to also look at what kind of communication and link budget we will have while relaying that data back to our ground control station as we're flying overhead. So looking at this for a mission planning kind of purpose, we want to find that trade-off between what kind of image quality we are really looking for, what our threshold might be, and of course, what kind of received isotropic power or communication we're gonna get flying along that specified route. 
So I can go through and I can kind of edit the route to optimize both of these parameters. So hopefully that was a good introduction to our aircraft engineering scenario. Again, we looked at the aviator routes, the communications, transmitter and receiver pair, our coverage module, as well as using custom terrain within our scenario. Thanks, everyone.